who are here, both sides, listening carefully and some listening in their offices. I hope uh, from here um, we have recognized um, that there is new information and that the new information needs to be taken into consideration before making this decision. Um, that building for yesterday, as David said, um, is not uh, building for tomorrow. Um, and we are making um, a, a decision for three generations based on three weeks of study uh, by members of council looking at the report um, and three minutes of differences um, on congestion. But perhaps the other thing we should be looking at is not the congestion for, for uh, or the supposed congestion for 3% uh, of the people who come downtown, but rather uh, what about the congestion for the 93% of the people who are in cars? And, uh, and we know that that uh, is possible. And I would suggest if you look at the appendix, it will tell you um, that even at the current uh, um, uh, present day value of, of just over $100 million, you could well take care of all of your issues um, around uh, uh, around uh, um, congestion, and then uh, we would have something for everybody. Uh, I wanted to uh, just uh, remind us about what that new information is as we move forward, um, and then uh, invite some questions from the press. Um, I also wanted to mention um, that we have uh, uh, three of the landowners who are represented here. Uh, Castle Point, uh, we have uh, W. Uh, Pilmer, who are building the West Domlands, and we uh, also uh, have uh, Daniels, who have just um, approved, had their lands approved as well. We have now heard from this uh, the new information. The new information, and we'll hear some more from the Mental Officer of Health this afternoon, that's important. We've heard new information about the environmental assessment. Um, how the environmental assessment is not, uh, um, does not uh, uh, favor uh, the hybrid. In fact, uh, the hybrid doesn't hit any of the targets of the requirements and therefore uh, will end up in a huge uh, uh, mismatch uh, and environmental uh, um, uh, um, tribunal, uh, in my view. Uh, it, it doesn't link us, the city, to the waterfront. It doesn't enhance uh, uh, the waterfront, it doesn't uh, balance the modes of transportation, it doesn't re create uh, new wealth in the in this precinct, and it doesn't, and it isn't sustainable. So those are the, those are the requirements, and people can judge uh, whether or not this hybrid actually does that or not, um, and I'd argue that it does not. Um, something that um, uh, was alluded to is affordable housing. Uh, we have uh, six sites uh, in, uh, in the Waterfront. Uh, we've been busy fighting with developers and getting some support from all of you uh, uh, to make sure that we got those six sites uh, uh, to hit 20%. And of those six sites, two of them are uh, not able to be built out with the high cost. So we have four sites, uh, and even those ones are very, very close to this roadway. Uh, not a good place to grow for our children. And then finally, you know, I think um, that uh, we've heard a lot about smart track and Unilever. Unilever is fine uh, one way or another, but won't be built for 15 years because they have to wait for the naturalization of the river uh, and floodproofing to occur. But also, um, this uh, hybrid impacts another opportunity where we could have a smart track stop uh, in the middle uh, of, uh, of the uh, west downlands towards the south of the Lines. So Smart Track is also uh, impacted today um, as opposed to being built out uh, uh, 15 years from now. So those are the new pieces that I would suggest that members of council need to pause, think about those things, uh, and need to think about what the Im implications are, and need to reset uh, this discussion so that we are able uh, to preserve one of the most beautiful uh, places uh, um, and opportunities that we have on this, uh, in this city to build out 